That's good, Al. That's good, yeah. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm here with a very important person, Al, AKA Bid Al. Man, thanks for being on the channel, Al, appreciate it. You're welcome. So what, what are we standing next to here, Al? What, what do you got for us today? The 1973 Plymouth Barracuda. And how long have you owned the car? 50 years, bought it brand new. I was in Vietnam when I ordered it, and it was home waiting on me when I got home. So you did order it brand new, then you didn't drive around and just pick it, you knew this is the car you wanted. Well, the um, overseas uh, Chevy, Ford, Chrysler, Dodge, Plymouth, they have representatives that go over there and they'll, they'll bring you a big catalog and you pick out what car you want. Of course, they can't have the cars over there, especially in a war zone. Right. But uh, that, that's how you choose. And then when I got home, my car was home waiting on me. That's sooner Chrysler died. That's crazy. So... Now, did, did everybody do that, or just 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 the uh, just Plymouth, j just uh, Mopar, just no, Mopar no, only, no. or did no, Ford do it? Yeah, Chevy did yeah. it too. Yeah. So I didn't know that. Yeah. So I always wondered how the how the veterans had got their cars and they got back from Vietnam, and uh, I just answered that question, you know. So they deliver it to uh, whichever place you chose. Well, I didn't even choose that, but there's I'm sure there was more than one Plymouth dealer at that time in the Oklahoma City area, but it was a Sooner Chrysler Dodge. So, why why, why the Cuda? What made you choose this car of all the cars the in 73? The way it looks, the stance, it, it, it looked really good, I, I loved it. Yeah, I mean, I, 73 is actually a beautiful car. Uh, the, the year, you know, I, 70, everyone, everyone likes a 71. 73 has a hood. I like the hood on the 73s myself. 71 but. is really what I wanted, but I couldn't afford it. I right. With poor airman in the Air Force. <laughs> so is that, is that what you did in the Air Force? He's an airman? Yes. You, you start out at a lower rank before it. So right. Yeah. And what would you work yourself up to? Uh, E5, which is Staff Sergeant. Staff Sergeant. And how many years was he in the Air Force? Uh, 10 years. 10 years. And he's able to keep the car all of them years, even after, even while while going back and forth. And yeah, I, uh, I, I got a civilian job after I got out of the Air Force at Tinker, but due to low federal wages from Tinker and raising three kids at the same time, my car was <laughs> broke down for ten years. Oh man! I just didn't have the money to get it going again, but I finally did. So how did you originally order this car? Was it, did you order it this color originally? Did you repaint it this color? No, it's, this is the original color. Uh, I, I wanted a red car, because that's my favorite color. Mine too, so I can't go wrong with red. <laughs> now what about engine wise? Did you, what, 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 what engines you ordered with this car? Well again, uh, being a poor airman, I had to go the cheapest route with a 318 engine and a three speed manual transmission. No air conditioning. Until recently. Until recently. And we're going to pause for a second. I got a train coming. All right, we're back after the mile and a half long train. So we left off with Al talking about the cars broke down for 10 years. Three kids wasn't able to fix it. And now, all these years later, you, you got it fixed. And yes, as, as I get the money, I'm trying to improve it. Uh, I had a 318 engine in it. I I ran into a guy at a car show, had a uh, 72 Dodge Challenger he wanted to get rid of. The body was a piece of crap, but uh, the engine was a 340, which I wanted. So the price was right. So I, I bought it, and now I have a 340 engine in it. And uh, about five years ago, I, I got, I had a, you know, I, when I got the car, I had a three-speed manual transmission. But now I have a Tremec five-speed manual transmission. So, Probably makes it a lot nicer on the highway oh, than yeah. for all, all the car shows you go to. Yeah, and it's a lot better. That fifth gear works great. And uh, so, what all have you done 
So it's a 340. What all have you done? I mean, there's all kinds of chrome chrome goodies under here. It looks yeah, I've like. Yeah, got a serpentine belt system. I now have air conditioning because I'm too damn old not to have it. I have power steering also, and uh, most recently, I am now in the 21st century. I have electric windows. <laughs> so, plus I also got a new uh, brake system there. About about a year ago or two years ago. So as I get the money, I'm improving it. I got rid of the leaf springs some time ago, and I have coilover shocks in the back. You gotta be kidding me! Here comes another train. And when I get the money, I'm gonna have coilover shocks in the front. Okay. Yeah, we'll cut it there. So you put you put the 340 in the car. Was that the engine you wanted back in 73 originally was a 340 because that was an option back then, but you just couldn't afford it? Well, the price was right when that, the new one popped that up. guy offered it, so I, I, I took the 340. And for those of you that don't know, uh, I know Al on a personal level, so I, I kind of know all, all the answers to the questions he's doing, but Al drives this car all the time. It, it's not a garage queen. He takes it to tons of shows every year what do you average 50 60 shows a year probably well, at, least. at least yeah i mean he he's he's known you know big al is coming when you see the bright red 73 cuda come down the road so i see you put the inlays here al with the mopar yes my son uh did that he's real good with graphics and whatnot he did a good, pretty good job on that, that and he got weld wheels instead of the factory wheels yep. a little bit lighter now, when I first met you, Al, you had some big old haunting wheels on this thing when I first met you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I first met Al, he had some big old, I mean, they were like out to like right here. I mean, they were, they were big and wide and so. They're actually about the same, same tires. Are they? Yeah. Uh, Smitty's Classics, who works on my car, they did an inset, which I really don't understand. But the tires actually, would come out to here. And at the time, I had air shock. Whenever the air got low, that uh, rub, it, it would rub on my tire. And Smitty Classic did it some kind of inset deal. Fits it up. Talk about more than me, uh, but it, it's no longer. It, it's all inside now. So, did the did, did this car come with the spool rear spoiler originally? Or did you add that to it? Oh no, I just got that about a month ago. Got that about a month ago? Yeah, because almost every CUDA you see, he's got one. Right. But again, being the poor airman in the Air Force, I, I, I went the cheapest route and not got one. But uh, I'm tired of seeing all the other CUDAs having one and not me, so I got one. Of course, he's got that rectangle uh, exhaust coming out of the rear bumper. These are, the thing at Plymouth and Mopars, it's hard to find this stuff that the plastic in between the bumper and the rear valence is yeah. almost impossible to find that's probably original the car known al it is he's got all that's probably the original trim he even kept the bumpers the 73 was the first year for these right mandatory you yeah, had to have like those sure. or is it 72 i'll tell you what i don't like them i don't know especially the front ones i'm thinking about taking them all off because I've hit my knee, I don't know how many times on them. A lot of people take them off. Yeah. <laughs> Rural men use all three pedals. Oh, look at the other one. <laughs> the, the one on the other side I, is better. I saw the one that said, don't touch my car. <laughs> yeah. Get baseball back. Now, how long ago did you restore this car, Al? <clears throat> um... It was repainted probably 20 years ago. And for therapy, I enjoy waxing it. So I wax it a lot. You wax what every Thursday just about, don't you? <laughs> Almost every Thursday. Unless I can get it back from Smitty's sooner than that. But <laughs> Now, who, whose signature is that, Al? Oh, that's the, the autograph of none other than Ann Wilson of Heart. She does a song called Barracuda. Yep which uh, I can play for you if you want to hear it. We will play for it here on the, or in the very front. Let me get here in the front of Al's car. He's got a little something something here, a little, little Hemi. 
a little special thing. Go for it, Al. All right. Ooh, That's my girlfriend, Ann Wilson, of heart. <laughs> so, I, I, I got to hear the story about how you got her to sign your car, and did you have that when you met her? On the front, did you have the speakers in yes. there to play it? Yeah, yes. And did you play it and did she smile? She said, she said, that's cool. <laughs> Ann Wilson was at uh, Lucky Star Casino in Concho, Oklahoma, uh, about, about a month ago. And I always wanted a, a picture of her and Nancy Wilson, her sister, with my Barracuda. Well, Ann and, Ann and Nancy have been separated for a few years, some kind of a family strife going on. They're back together now, though. But anyway, uh, I always wanted a picture of Ann and Nessie Wilson. Uh, Ann didn't want her picture taken. I don't know why, but that's okay. But I did get to meet her, and she did sit in my front front seat and autograph my dash, which I was I was honored. You got a picture of that at the house, probably. No, it was no, no, no picture. She didn't want her picture taken. Oh, that's right. But autographs better than nothing. So the seat's original to the car? Uh, no, it's been reupholstered once. Okay, and of course I know the door panels are new because we just did the shop here. Yeah, so well, the great uh, uh, orderer at uh, Smitty's Classics, he ordered these. And uh, the dash is original, the back seat is original. The carpet's been replaced twice. And uh, see, that's about, that's about it, I think. Oh, oh, I got new instrument panel also. Yep, so we changed out the, the original instrument cluster that came in the car, the Correct. Speedo and stuff. Yes. Changed it out with the Dakota Digitals. Right. And they actually look, they look almost, they look really nice in the car. They, I think they, so. they turn, they, at nighttime they're bright red. You won't be able to see it right now during the day because it's too bright out. But they, uh, they maintain their factory look, which is why I like the Dakota Digital. We install a bunch of them in the shop but it allows you the convenience of some kind of modern technology as well. So like your, like your mileage and everything, LCD is all in there. So you still have your factory radio in here, yeah. but you don't use that no more though, right? Now, no. you, now you use the one right. hidden in, in there. Bluetooth. Yep. And this is my eight track player that I got probably maybe two years after I bought this car. He's high rolling then, weren't you, with the A-Track? <laughs> A-Tracks are terrible. <laughs> they still terrible. I don't know why anybody would even want them. But if it was hooked up, um, I wouldn't mind actually playing an A-Track down there just to show people how bad they are. Changing tracks right in the middle of a song, you know. <laughs> but that's the way it was back then. And, uh... And see, I don't fit most of these cars. I fit in Al's cars. Kind of, I look. I got all kinds of headroom here. Trans Ams, Camaros, Mustangs. I don't fit in them. There's no headroom. And Al's car actually fit in it. Of course, he's got the legendary pistol grip shifter, which is just it fits so nice in your hand. I mean, Dodge outdid themselves when they designed this shifter. I, I mean, I there's agree. something about the pistol grip shifter from Dodge. When they came out with this thing, I think in 71 is the first year of the pistol grip, if I remember right. I absolutely love it. And uh, yeah, just, and this is probably the original original one to the car, right? No. No, nope, you changed it. Uh, the original had a, just a ball on there. Okay. Which well, you actually was pretty good though, but this is much better. All right. Yep, and then of course all the classic cars back in the day had that straps up, up here for the for your uh, seat belts and yeah, which I got new seat belts. Oh yeah. So we got a hold of Seatbelt Planet. They're here in Oklahoma City. They're yeah. not sponsoring this video, but at the shop, it's who we use at Smitty's Classics, and we did some red and black custom seat belts for Al for his Cuda. Yes. We'll just drive around on the street, or yeah, we can head on the street and go through the gears and whatnot. So. Sure. All right. Can you believe it's this nice in February? Unbelievable, it's about time. We'll have to uh, shut the out. Great white. It's a great song, but 
for some reason, YouTube finds it offensive if I have music with my videos and they won't let me play the audio. Well, yeah. So, I had turned it off, but it turns back on. Being huge, uh, Bluetooth. Right. So, what, what are some of your favorite memories in the car, Al? I mean, you've had it for 50 years. Well, some I can't tell you, but I was under. <laughs> um, I'll tell you, I just love driving it, rocking out with my music, and shifting gears. It's just a lot of fun. Have you ever gotten tired of the car after all these years? Uh, the only time I'm tired of it is if, if I, the few parades I've been in, that's a, it's a lot of shifting. Stop and go shifting, it kind of gets old real quick. But, uh... well, one of the coolest things about the classic cars is, is looking, looking over the hood of them. I mean, they each have their own shape, their own design. Unlike new cars, they're all kind of flat, round, or boring. You know, classic cars, they all had their own individual lines. and. The same three two does is no there's no exception of that. You got the big dual rammer scoops on the hood that just adds to the uniqueness of what this car really is. And everywhere you go, people's going people will turn their head and look at you. I get thumbs up all the time. <laughs> I've had people I can look in my rear view window and I see people people taking pictures of my car. I've had people follow me to a gas station it takes me 30 minutes to gas up because they want to talk which is okay with me i you know i like talking about my car so always have a good time you know this time last year there's snow on the ground the last year this time there's snow on the ground like 25 degrees um, and this year it is 75 and just sunny and beautiful in the middle of February in Oklahoma. I don't see how anybody stands living up north where their, their summers are very short. Yeah, couldn't do it. No way I'd live up there. I need my sunshine. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it gets hot here sometimes, but if it's 100 degrees, there's almost always a breeze, and so it's really not that bad. So that's why I was wondering, uh, Ferrari Testarossa. Yeah. I was wondering if uh, I was wondering if you race too, you know. But maybe, right. maybe it's more more maybe it's more of a small town thing because where I'm from, it's a really small town. Yeah. Well, again, being a poor airman, the more you race, the more your cars are 
break, probably going to break down, and I couldn't afford to get them fixed, so I didn't, didn't really want to race them. Of course, my 318 engine only had a, a single carburetor in there. I think I only had 100, on the, 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 the stat sheet only said 150 horsepower. <laughs> so. Well, but after 1971, though, the cars are, even after 70, but really after 71, the cars are really detuned for emissions and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Fuel is starting to go up and... I think the last true muscle car, muscle car would have been would have been the '73 Super Duty Trans Am. That thing still had crazy amount of horsepower and torque. I don't know how Pontiac got away with that without getting fined by the EPA, but they did it somehow. And then by '74, that's all she wrote. I mean, it, by '74, the muscle car was dead. I mean, that just all there was to it. That's, that's terrible. Right there, he just got a big thumbs up from a guy hanging out the window. Yeah. Make sure, <laughs> make, make sure we saw it. I get that all the time. <laughs> so, so, did you ever think you'd ever own this car this long? No, not really. Uh, there were like a time. There were there was times I wanted to sell it because I needed the money, but I just couldn't do it. So when I die, my uh, my I'm gonna give it to my two boys. They can uh, take take turns driving. As soon as well, my oldest can, he knows how to drive a standard. My other son, not so much. But he's a real bu busy man, so I, I urge him to come with me to, to drive it. He drives it pretty good, except it dies on him every time in first gear. Just lack lack of practice. You know, driving the standard is kind of a lost art nowadays. Standard is an actual good uh, anti-theft device nowadays. Yeah. You can hit that orange heart, it's fully injured. You can, you can do me a favor, man. No. <laughs> you don't want to do that. <laughs> That's a nice bike. I appreciate it, Al. I've had that bike 14 years. Really? Yep. Yeah. Again, I'm kind of like you with that bike, the way you are with this car. It's like, you know, I thought I should sell it, but I just can't bring myself to do it. Yeah, I know. And, I know. you know, it just it is what it is. But I'll, I'll never sell this. I had somebody offer me uh, $50,000 for it. Turned it down. A lot of money. Yep, it is. You could have bought yourself a new uh, a demon for that. No, these are better than demons, in my opinion. <laughs> Unless it's a late model demon. like you know. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm talking about a new 700 horse demon. Well, speaking of 700 horse, uh, on my phone, let's see if I can bring this up here. 